It's a personal thing tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 into this city in the name of the Lord and we decree and declare that let every knee bow before the great and mighty name and let every door that has been closed be open and we decree that this season will truly bet an army in this territory a people that will stretch the frontiers of his kingdom and cause that your kingdom come on earth Thank you for in this meeting, no one will be the same. No life will be the same. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. While you still stand, please give us a scripture. Let's use it to pray before the meeting begins. You're all welcome in the name of Jesus. Akwanga, glad seeing you. Glad seeing you. Amen. We come to you in the name of the Lord. Amen. And um, it has pleased the Lord to bring us to you and to have us make fellowship together. And I know that your lives will never be the same. I know here and there we have a lot of ministers here. We celebrate you. We love you. We honor you. I can see a few of you. And um, we celebrate what God is doing through you in this city. And we know that your labor will never be in vain. Our common is to contribute to what God has been using you to do. Hallelujah. The Bible says Paul planted an Apollo waters, but the one that gives the increase is God. You've been planting, our common is to water it. So that after this emergence, something strategic should begin to happen in your city. You believe it, Akwanga, say a loud amen. amen. Hallelujah. All right, one scripture and then we pray before the meeting or the teaching begins. The meeting has started already, actually. Acts of the Apostles 2, from verse 1. Let's just take that to pray. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all together in one accord, in one place like we are now. All right, my screen is here. And suddenly there came a sound. There is about to be another suddenly tonight. There is about to be another suddenly tonight. He said, as a mighty wind, rushing wind, and he filled all the house. Already the glory of the Lord is in this house. Oh, yes. Where they were sitting, and then next verse, and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire. And the Bible says he sat upon each of them, my place of interest, each of them. And they were all filled, not some of them, not the apostles, not the men of God. They were all filled. And then the Bible said they began to manifest. Something will come on you in this conference and you will manifest. I mean you will manifest. You're going to pray in one minute. The Bible tells us in the book of Luke 5, 17 that Jesus was teaching in a certain place and people gathered. But the amazing thing is that the people that came first didn't even receive anything. Those that came late came and the whole place was jam-packed. They had to tear open the roof and drop their brother and he was the one that received. Tonight, God is in this place and we are not like Jacob. We know no, we know that he's here. We are aware. You're going to pray in one minute and say, Oh Lord, let something sit on me. For these two days, for these two meetings, two days, three meetings, let something sit on me. Let the Holy Ghost come on me. 
let a fresh fire fall on me let my life my business my family my work with god never be the same let there be a shift 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 lift your voice and pray come on are you talking to the lord of wonder pray this is how you pray pray Come on, are you praying God's people? There is a place hey, where my heart cries to Lord. That's where God is bringing us into. There is a place. Lord, let something fall on me. I will be the one to come here and spectate. I will be the one to come here and watch. I will be the one to come here. And see other people get blessed. See other people get healed. Kabarate kete malala braya. Let me be a receiver. 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 Kabarate kete la. Shoko braya te bela kete. Elo braya kete la. Ero shoko kete. Barande kete bela braya. Jesus. Oh Jesus. Hallelujah. Now lift your hands wherever you are. Just be still. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Don't be distracted. Possible close your eyes. It's not time to be distracted. It's time to receive. three people that are the first partakers of what God is doing tonight I see three of you and I literally see an oil a jar of oil coming on you I don't know where you're standing now but at the count of three be the first partaker of everything God will be doing in this conference at the count of three one two and now three help him drink of this fountain 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 i heard a lion Lord, may no one be the same. 
Thank you for your visiting us, visiting our city. Kola Baba de Keshataya. Brandi Kisu Balada Bregadesa. Hari Hari Yo. Hari Yo. Hari Yo. Hari Hari Yo. Hari Hari Yo. Hari Yo. Hari Yo. Hari Hari Yo. He's the guardian of champions. He's the guardian of heroes. Hari Hari Yo. from this city it is a cry that mighty men arise from this state and power weekly is into mighty men men that will do business in deep waters men that will stop the gates of hell men that will push darkness back to where it belongs and in the name of jesus let this meeting be strategic to our horizon let it be strategic to our emergence in the name of the lord jesus Koda makashki da baya, brande kesula brakete ya. Ah, your life will never be the same. Akwanda will never be the same. Believe me, believe me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Be enthroned in our midst. Can you quietly be seated in this holy atmosphere? Tonight we have the lion. We have the lion. We adore the lion. Yeah, 
Kola manembre se la prasha neana El ambrosia le cabro yona nana neosa Nela mana neosa la braya ne kaya Oh dear. Obadiah one. Please if you can be seated. what's happening to you is that you are being initiated into a higher experience you see when we talk about initiation it's not just the occultic world that can initiate people even your born again experience was an initiation are you aware no are you aware was blood skills for your salvation then it was an initiation initiated into a higher level of life take it back to normal it was okay initiated into a higher dimension a higher level of life for many of you you will leave this emergence after tomorrow you will want to be normal and it will not be possible no i hope you believe me i didn't come to flatter you i mean you will want to be normal and it will not be possible there are meetings you can enter into and all of a sudden you will become like saul another man another man another man Obadiah 121 and saviors shall come up on Mount Zion and then the Bible said the assignment will be to judge Esau and then he said the kingdom shall be the Lord's saviors shall arise other translation saviors shall emerge they will come up from a quanga and the assignment will be to judge anything that does not represent the nature and the counsel of God Take the key down. I want to do a song. Do you know that you are the army God is looking for? You are the one. We came to sound an alarm like you heard earlier. I can see with the eyes of my spirit. I can hear a sound of a new church marching. And I know they are coming in their thousands. They are coming from afar. They are coming from afar. Ah, I can see with the eyes of my spirit. I can hear a sound of a new church emerging and I know they are coming in their millions and they are coming from afar coming from afar ah. oh, oh, oh. oh, oh, oh. Hallelujah. Take it down, please. 
saviors shall arise they will rise with power please still reduce the keyboard and reduce my mic if possible they will arise in politics saviors will arise in business saviors will arise in religion saviors will arise in family life saviors will arise and they are not arising empty-handed they are not arising as feeble men they are rising with power they are rising full of grace they are rising with results every time you realize that wickedness is looming around your territory it is already a proof that men are lacking men are lacking because whenever god want to address the issue of darkness whenever god want to address the issue of evil whenever god wants to address the issue of revival the first thing god does is that he looks for men he will look for men he will search around in a territory he will look around can i find a man my plan is to bring up a governor from akwanga a believer that will represent the counsel of god but can i find a man my plan is to raise a man that become a multi billionaire that will advance the kingdom of god in this city and territory but can i find a man that the purposes of god can be stranded the purposes and plans of god can be limited when men are absent can two work together the bible says except they agree hallelujah so you are the one god is looking up to again and again we've asked where is the god of elijah but do you know what god is asking in this season we are the elijahs of god we are the men whose hearts are given we are the men who are ready to take the banner of the lord and then present it to their generation you hear the song joy sang i will tell my generation that jesus um, I will tell it to the world, right? I, I sang my own version. I will tell it to my world. Your world is waiting for you. There is somebody that must tell them. There must some, be somebody that present the counsel of God. Hallelujah. So whenever you see darkness, it's not time to panic. Every time you see chaos, it's not time to be frightened. Every time you see chaos, it's an opportunity for life to emerge. Every time you see evil, every time you see things happening in your territory and it looks like evil is suppressing light is an opportunity for light is an opportunity for the songs of light isaiah 60 let me show you a scripture from verse one everybody read one to read arise uh-huh shine why for your light has come listen you don't arise and shine because you went to school you don't arise and shine because it has been given to you to shine you arise and shine because light has come we will talk on this tomorrow morning light has come so arise shine for your light is come and then he said the glory of the lord is risen upon you verse 2 for behold the darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people he's describing something here and this was the same chaos that was in genesis 1 darkness chaos everywhere and the bible said elohim said let there be light and there was light now the same thing is repeated here this was prophetic for a generation and he's saying darkness will be everywhere cultism everywhere evil everywhere but then he said when you see this don't panic gross darkness the people he said but the lord shall arise upon thee and his glory shall be seen on you when this light comes on you look at what happened in verse 3 look up this is a prophecy for you and then gentiles shall come to your light say amen, amen. gentiles shall come to your light listen gentiles don't come to you they come to what you have huh? if you don't have anything they have no business with you i'm a christian regardless I'm a believer regardless the point is what do you have i have light they come to your light not to your english they come to your light not to who your father is they come to your light not to your tribe 
they come to your light it's not a solidarity thing no they come to what you have nobody likes me the question is why should they like you everybody don't likes me the question is why should they there must be something in your life that attracts them is that true gentiles shall come to your light that is something you have listen carefully and only your village people will look for you there is something you will have only your classmates will look for you if you are intelligent in class is that it there is something you will have only your family member will need you there is something you will have only uh, maybe your city will look for you there is something you will have only black men will look for you but there is something you will have all men will come for you huh they came to jesus his disciples said master all men seek for you all men are looking for you all men from every race are looking for you if the only people looking for you are your village people you are you are in big problem if the only people looking for you are your tribal people you are in problem arise shine light has come then he said if you have that light gentiles shall come to you and there are a class of people that don't come because you have light they come because your light is bright enough the bible said they are kings will come to the brightness of your rising the brightness if you don't have a bright light they don't come to you no they don't come royalty will look for you when your light is bright enough hope you know that what you call results even people in the world have it i have money there are unbelievers that have money i have influence you are not the first unbeliever have influence so your light must be bright enough to compel them gentiles come to your light they are kings come to the brightness of your rising they know you they have been waiting for you they have been waiting romans 8 from verse 18 and 19 kodabaka shatabaya they are waiting for i reckon i understand i come into terms with the fact that the sufferings of this present age you saw the preacher's ministration here a lot of us are going through tough times and hard times now i came with a word from god that what you are going through is not unto death what you are going through now is not going to kill you you see the training of god does not kill men it only kills the flesh ah huh? i reckon i understand that the sufferings the challenges the constraint of now are not worthy to be compared to the glory which shall be revealed in us then watch this when you go through this and god has prepared you the next thing that awaits is manifestation then he said for the earnest expectation of the creation everybody complete the reading you went to school now you read here read it loud let me hear you ah you have to read oh, be very lively in this place amen let's know that you welcome us huh say amen a louder amen a joyful amen <laughs> for the earnest expectation of the creation listen it's not just human beings that are waiting for you even inanimate objects are waiting for you was it not joshua that commanded the sun to stand still he didn't say human being he said creature everything even the chairs you are sitting on is waiting on you for many of you the chair you are sitting on knows he's saying this guy by now should have been manifesting a dimension of the healing anointing you are sitting on me and you are not doing anything i've been waiting creatures are waiting they are not waiting for you to explain jesus they are waiting for you to reveal him the bible said all that jesus began but to do and to teach if all you have is teaching you don't have it yet if all you have is doing you still are not balanced they are waiting for the manifestation a balanced christian life the manifestation of sons not explanations manifestation you are the one they are waiting for for many of you maybe you feel like giving up already this journey is tough i don't know how i got into this listen don't give up now you've come too far already no you've come too far you've come too far 
Reduce it and give me pure strings, please. Hold up a cash Jewel now started describing this army. And let's see the description Jewel gave us. Jewel chapter 2 is one of our anchor scripture for the image armies. Thank you. Can you talk to the Lord in tongues for one minute? Just go ahead. Do that. I feel it in my spirit. Just talk to the Lord in the spirit. Ah, you are in prophecy. Yembre Toski Bretiki Valada Braya. there is a giant in you the real you is about to start manifesting ah yeah Ah, we are the light of the world not of the church God is setting us on fire to release us into our generation hallelujah Joel 2 from verse 1 Blow ye the trumpet in Zion Blow ye the trumpet in Akwanga Sound the alarm in my holy mountain Then let the inhabitant of the land tremble For the day of the Lord cometh Every time you see the day of the Lord in scripture He's talking about the end of the age The end time The day of the Lord cometh Then he says it is now at hand how many of you know that we are closer to the coming of Jesus than we've ever been? Are you aware? Prophecies are being fulfilled on daily basis. So blow the trumpet. Then he started describing the generation or that dispensation. He said a day of darkness. That was what Isaiah described. Is that it? We just saw it now. A day of darkness, of gloominess, and a day of cloud and of thick darkness. As the morning spread upon the mountains, this is how the darkness spread. But that when this happened, in the midst of this, in the midst of the chaos, in the midst of the peril, the Bible said, a great people and a strong people will emerge. When it looks like evil is prevailing, the Bible said, right in the midst of darkness, a great people will emerge. And look at their description. He said they had never been their light before. And then after them, there will not be anyone like them, even to the years of many generations. No one had ever been like them. And after them, there will not be any generation like unto them. Walking in dimensions of graces, walking in dimensions of God's presence, they had never been, and they will never be. So when you see darkness, rejoice. An army is imaging that God does not have to go to Lafia or go to Abuja to go and look for men to come and pioneer the revival here. No, 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 no. Right in the midst of Akwanga, men are imaging. Right in the midst, in the darkness, that's when men emerge. Right in the midst of darkness, there are men emerging from this city. Oh, I want you to believe it. I have a passion for the state, national state, and I have a passion for the cities. This is why we visit around 
regardless of the expenses we are committed to ensuring that this thing spread like wildfire listen akwanga is too small for all of us <laughs> are you hearing what i'm saying here when we start when the fire fall akwanga is too small for all of us some of you god will have to carry you from here and send you somewhere else because the fire will be too much i hope you believe what i'm saying verse 2 All right, verse 3. Now we've read this. A fire devoured before them. He's describing the army now. That this is going to be your life. A fire. You will carry the fire of God before you. And behind them, a flame burned. The land before them is as the garden of Eden. Meaning, if you are called into business or whatever it is you are called into, you shouldn't enter there and you are frustrated. Do you know what was obtainable in the garden of Eden? Possibilities in all the rivers that were in the garden the bible tells us that there were precious stones gold the land before you becomes as the garden of eden you shouldn't start a business as a believer an unbeliever beside you is doing well and then your complaint is that he got a charm and you are a believer and your business is not working something more than gold I have something more than charm. Is that it? Something more than charm. Oh, I have something more than gold. I all I have is Jesus. I have something. I will tell it to the world that Jesus is more. The land before them. For many of you after this emergence you will go back to that business and see strange results oh believe it many of you will go back to that ministry that is almost dying in your hands and you will see revival like never before no believe it you will go back to your secret place and the fire that will let go from there you will know that this is not normal the land before them is as the garden of eden and behind them a desert please reduce it some more the land behind them is as a desolate wilderness yeah and the bible said nothing shall escape them they are a very thorough people nothing shall escape them next verse the appearance of them is as the appearance of horses and as horsemen so shall they run strength like the noise of chariot on the top of mountains shall they leap like the noise of a flame of fire that devoured the stubbles as a strong people set in battle array uh -huh. before their faces the people shall be much pain all the faces shall gather blackness they shall run like mighty men they shall climb the wall like men of war and they shall march everyone on his way and they shall not break their ranks read on neither shall one trust another they shall walk everyone on his path and when they fall upon the sword are you seeing this from scripture when they fall upon the sword complete the reading they shall not be wounded meaning gun cannot kill you knife cannot kill you huh they will fall upon the sword this is the description of the army god is raising in these last days fall upon the sword and they are not destroyed they want to learn i mean train a a, a young boy that is in secret secret court they used to call it secret sometimes but and you are the one they use for the hazard they will come over your roof and just spray some things and the next thing you are frightened or you wake up your back they are children are using you to rehearse or apparently witchcraft are using you to rehearse the bible says you will fall on the sword and you won't die they will shoot you with gun the bullet will not enter i wonder do you believe what i'm sharing you have to believe it you have to believe it then look at verse 9 put it up they shall run to and fro in the city and they shall run upon the wall they shall climb upon the houses they shall enter in at the window like what 
if you are a religious person in this last age you will miss it because let me tell you this reduce the keyboard the things God will be doing in this age and time some of them will not look like they are still within the context of scripture I will tell you this the Bible said Jesus telling us anyone that passed through the window is what is a thief now Joel is prophesying and saying this army that God will raise they will even go through the window what is God saying he's saying that we will see in this last age and time manifestation that are not even in the Bible that it will take the sermon using the lens of the spirit to know that this one is God although it might not be captured in your experience but it is still God for instance what happens if I disappear now some of you will say that apostle I know him I've been suspecting him is that not I watched him online I knew he was not a human being some of you will say that I've, I've been knowing that this guy is not normal or let's assume the meeting is up when it's time for me to minister I just appear here and I'm here with the mic I came with the mic and I start talking and it's answering from all the speakers some of you will say alright tomorrow I will be patient and hear what he has to say today but tomorrow me will not come into this meeting again because your entire theology does not capture this reality but I have a question was it not Philip that appeared in Azatos after ministering to the centurion do you appear when you have not disappeared? A man ran on it on his legs and overran the presidential chariot on his legs. Meaning you can shorten it an eight hours journey for three hours. So you're about to travel, you lay your hand on your car. Father, I'm already late for the meeting. Run the car, two hours. You enter and you cut distance in the realm of the spirit. And you arrive there two hours. Eight hours journey. You arrive two hours. Ah, Apostle, I've come sharing some things here. Yes, yeah, so. You will have to believe what I'm telling you. That these are the things we'll see in our age and time. The Bible says Jesus resurrected. These guys are in a closed door. Jesus entered without opening the door. Is that not in your Bible? If you were there, you would be like the Thomas. I won't believe. They will enter in at the window like a thief. Meaning some manifestation will be so strange that it will take real discernment to know that this is God. You are my everything and my destiny. You are my everything my destiny i love you i need you i love you yeah i need i love you lord i love you i need you to your children and the first day they enter school they prophesy to their teacher and you're like what kind of child is this these are the things that will happen in our age and time hallelujah you will meet people you've never met before and by meeting them their lives has changed you will shake out with somebody and the HIV in his body disappears you are not a pastor this thing is not reserved for Pastor Akwanga. Listen, listen. What God wants to do in this age and time is not for pastors. It's for every believer. You have to believe this. This is not the time where God is raising celebrity Christians. No, no, no. If you are still wishing that one day God will lift me and will become popular, everybody will celebrate me, then you are behind time. Because what God is doing now is that he's raising everybody. An army is emerging we are not one we are not two we are not ten we are in billions all around the world we are in billions this is a time where you have to make up your mind lord i'm part of this army whatever it is you are doing in this age and time let me be part of it i might be in politics but let me be a politician that knows the future 
a prophet in politics I might be a businessman but let me be an apostle to the marketplace one of the graces of, of an apostle is that he doesn't start a thing that dies no let him enter a barren land something must germinate from there so you enter business with that grace we have people enter and fail you enter with that grace and like a joke like a joke people ask you are you a pastor no not exactly a pastor but if you call me a pastor you are not wrong and they shall call you the ministers of our god it's in your bible it has nothing to do with being a man of god he has everything to be I mean to do with being a believer the bible said these signs shall follow them that are men of god shall follow them that are apostles shall follow them that are pastors follow them that believe so if you believe the sign is for you if you are a, except if you are not a believer but if you are a believer the signs are for you when last did you stand over your home and say i'm speaking now as a priest over this house thus far have you come no further will you go you are the one god is waiting for many of you think you are waiting for god oh lord when will you visit now god is saying i visited are you ready for us to work together already the visitation has happened hallelujah let me share with you four or five characters or things you should note about this army this army that is imaging few things you should note about them number one they are going to be passionate for souls passion for souls you are part of this army when we see the passion you have for souls passion for souls give me souls or nothing else give me souls or nothing else use me or kill me lord i'm available kingdom first let it be about you not even about me let it be about souls someone must be saved if you are crying and asking god to make you a millionaire the question is why should he make you a millionaire i want to buy a car and then let everybody know i'm now established if that's the reason you won't become i want to have it so that everybody will know that my service to god has produced result is still not sufficient i want to be wealthy so that those who have laughed at me will now know it's still not sufficient you are not the first person people have laughed at is that true what's the reason lord for kingdom advance if you make me a millionaire today is for the kingdom if you anoint my head today is for the kingdom if you give me the healing anointing today is for the kingdom if you open my eyes as a prophet to see the lives of people is for the kingdom it's not for pride it's not for my vain glory it revolves around the kingdom this is why a lot of people have been praying for things they are not getting i bring you a word from god when your motive is not right you will never get it lord anoint me let akwanga know that there is a prophet in this city oh you've gotten it wrong already lord increase my ministry let the people know that you truly called me you've gotten it wrong already it has to be the kingdom the kingdom your kingdom reign your kingdom reign above all above all above my desires your kingdom reign above my personal ambitions your kingdom reign above my selfish desires above all above all lord teach us to pray luke 11 from verse 1 as john also taught his disciple and jesus said whenever you pray this is the order of prayer it should be in this manner our father which art in heaven hallowed be thy name we admit that you are our father we know where you are we reverence you so worship number one god is at the top of the list number two thy kingdom come your will be done so number two priority let me tell you something about this lost prayer some of you must have listened to my teachings it was not just um a prayer whatever that was given to us it was also an order for your life the order of priority in your life that number one in your life should be god our father is that it 
which art in heaven our father remember in the book of genesis 1 verse 1 in the beginning complete it stop there in the beginning god meaning to every beginning god must be involved if you really want to make headway in the beginning of business god in the beginning of my university life god in the beginning of my relationship god in the beginning of my marriage god in the beginning of the ministry god now jesus is bringing the same order when you pray this order must be followed number one our father when you recognize him then honor him hallowed be thy name then number two in the order is the kingdom thy kingdom come your will be done as it is in heaven so number two in the order is the kingdom it's not even you yet is the kingdom so you enter the place of prayer father thank you thank you for everything you've done and now in the name of jesus i ask no no i ask that you cross on my business i ask, no if you do that you are getting the order wrong i'm showing you why people pray and never get results so we enter we do well by entering with thanksgiving come into the court with thanksgiving of course access is given you've entered now let's hear the prayer point the next thing is lord my mother's business god is saying no you are getting this thing wrong go and check the lost prayer our father number one number two prayer should be what kingdom kingdom then number three give us our daily bread you are number three in the order you are not number one you are not number two you are number three give us our daily bread everything you do is for the sake of your stomach hope you know you went to school for your stomach <laughs> you got the job for your stomach this your small stomach is what's controlling you some of you, your own is big that's what that's why you get the, that's why you go out in the morning your stomach because if you stay at home it will tell you see hallelujah give us our is number three then he now said forgive us as we forgive others everybody say relationships say it again relationships you are not a poor man because you don't have money you are a poor man because you don't have men huh hope you know there are people that can call one and thousands will answer there are people if they find themselves in a mess now one and cry you will see the way crowd gather you are not a poor man because you lack money you are a poor man because you have no fruitful relationships in fact when you notice that you don't have relationships profitable relationships start crying to god because every money that ever entered your hand it was from another hand into your hand is that it it didn't fall from heaven it was from one hand to your hand so number four is the relationships equation and number five deliver us from satan is last tell your neighbor satan is last and guess how some of us pray after worshiping the lord and asking what you want you now jump on him i bind and i lose you will use three hours to bind a man god says you should resist and you will flee a code was given to you resist him and you will what now we use two hours and bind him as though we are now so your kingdom your kingdom every time you are passionate for souls is a proof that this thing you've been recruited into this army passion for souls and it's not just about going out first for evangelism i've shared the levels of evangelism number one that is evangelism by character where your life reflects the life of Christ and somebody is convicted there is evangelism by sharing tracts or witnessing to people directly there is also evangelism by result there is something that is happening in your life and people want to know the source is that it? you started a business last year now you are already driving a car you are a multi-millionaire how did it happen? everyone say Jesus it's called evangelism by result you are the smartest in your class result was pasted and you were 4.9 and everybody come around and say how on earth and you tell them see i love jesus honestly it is jesus I'm, I'm not the smartest in this class in terms of staying and reading but jesus that is evangelism by result that something is happening in your life and people are under pressure they want to identify with your result hope you know not everybody likes you until you have result and when you start having results not everybody like you because of you they like you because of what is in your life 
Remember our scripture? Gentiles shall come to your, not to you, to your light. They don't like you. They have no business with you. They only come to what you have, your light. They come to your light. Then there is evangelism on your knees. This is the one we have to talk about now. Evangelism on your knees. How many people in your family are not born again yet? And question, how will you feel if you get into heaven and your auntie is not there? You get to heaven and your mother didn't arrive. You arrive in heaven and your father didn't enter. How will you feel? But apostles have been talking to them about Jesus. They are not answering. Let me tell you something. People don't believe because you talk. You, they believe because there is a spirit that comes with what you say. If it is just because you talk, you are not the first person that talk. I, I, I gather them in morning devotion and I do Bible study. See, it's not by doing Bible study and talking alone. The Bible tells us in Corinthians 4, 4, 1st, 2nd Corinthians, in whom the God of this world have blinded the minds of them that believe not. So you don't just go and talk and expect them to believe. What you do first is that you remove that darkness. How about waking up at night, 12 a.m. in your house? And you say, Lord, I stand as a priest over this house. I decree that the darkness that is looming over this house leave now. I insist. Salvation comes to this house. And you pray. The following morning, you wake up again. Talk to them about Jesus. They don't believe you. Go back at night. Nothing happened in the physical until it has been addressed in the spirit. You come with English, they also can speak English. Nothing happened. Apostle, what if I've been praying for one month? Keep praying. It depends on what has covered your mind. Keep praying. Bro, katabalada. I heard a bishop who said he prayed for his friend for 29 years. When he got born again in, 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 in high institution, his friend refused. 29 years down the line was when his friend gave his life to Christ and the man had been praying for him. Evangelism on your knees. Lord, give me my city. Give me Akwanga. Give me Nasarawa State. Lord, give it to me. Give me souls or nothing else. If you will not give me souls, don't give me money. Lord, if you will not use me, don't even give me anything. All I want, souls. But apostle, I'm not a pastor. You must not be a pastor. You can be an intercessor. That's one of the graces we trust God to fall on people here. Say amen. The grace for intercession. Where you can hide yourself in your secret place and you pray for three hours, for four hours, and you didn't call your name. You were praying for Akwanga, praying for the body of Christ. Crying with groanings. Oh God, visit my city. Oh, I give you no rest. Passion for souls is one of the first ways we know those who are truly recruited into this army. You see people walking on the street and they are not saved and they are misbehaving and you are like, ah, continue. Jesus will come. All of you will rust in fire. Uh-uh. 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 That should drive you to the place of prayer. You go back home at night and say, Lord, I saw those young men. I don't know them from Adam, but in the name of Jesus. Bro, take up and Let that darkness over them be rolled off. And you are praying. And God will look and say, ah, do you know them from Adam? I don't know. You see, in this kingdom, when you make God's business,